Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for what you're doing in our nation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because as we obey your instruction every night of this month, thank you for the results that we are seeing already. You are changing things in our nation. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Therefore, Lord, today you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. We receive freely from you abundance of knowledge and understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been studying on, uh, about Esther. And yesterday we got into chapter 5 in the book of Esther. Praise God. Now, I, would all, I want to also invite you tonight at 12 midnight for our prayer meeting. Don't, don't miss it. If you can join us, please do so. 12 midnight, West African time. That's the time we're using. And it's via Zoom. So you, you can see the link on the screen. And you can just join us by 12 midnight. God bless you. All right, let's go on now. Chapter 5, uh, let me just read, recap what we read yesterday. Let me just start from verse 1. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robe and stood in the inner court of the king's palace across from the king's house while the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. So it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight. Remember how Esther got to this place. She had fasted with the whole, the whole Jews in, in, in that city. She had fasted and prayed for three days. And then she made up her mind that on the third day I'm going to show up. And when I show up, if I perish, I perish. Praise God. Now... But when she stood out there, she found favor in the sight of the king. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half the kingdom. Now, I told you yesterday, this is, a, this is how kings used to talk in those. But is it not amazing that? There is no one on record that actually asked for half of the kingdom. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, because they always say that. Remember John the Baptist? When Herodians, Herod, Herodians' daughter asked for uh, the head of John the Baptist on the platter, Herod actually said to her, Ask me whatever you want, even to the half of my kingdom. See? That's how King used to speak then. Now, I don't know if they meant that figure. We need to do some history to ascertain if that was just a figurative speech or they really mean, I mean, they were that happy to be ready to give away half of the kingdom. You know, for example, like John's case, I used to wonder why, why didn't she just ask for the half of the kingdom, the part that had John the Baptist, so she can do anything with John the Baptist that she want, wished and then also enjoy whatever she wanted to enjoy. But you are giving <laughs> up to half of the king kingdom and then you just say, I want the head of somebody. All right. Now that's what wickedness can do in the heart of a man. It blinds you. Praise God. So here the king also said to Esther, anything you want, even half of the kingdom. So Esther answered, if it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Now, this was a very smart move. Now, we're studying all these things and we're learning everything we need to learn from this. Even as in this season, we are releasing the Esthers and the, and the Hushites in our nation. Praise God. Now, Esther was given an opportunity. He said, look, ask anything you want, even to half of my kingdom. And then Esther said, okay, sir, sir O oh king, if it pleases you, I'm going to prepare dinner tonight and I want you to come. And Haman 
to come with you. Now, where is Esther getting all this wisdom from? We didn't read that Mordecai told her this part or told her exactly what to do in this regard. But that's what I'm telling you. When you pray to the Lord, He answers. And how does He answer? He gives you wisdom. Remember what Ecclesiastes 2 said, God gives to the one that is good in his sight wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Now, you, you need to understand what God, God doesn't rain down money from heaven. He can if he wants to. So I'm, when I say God doesn't, I didn't say he cannot. But that's not his modus operandi. That's not how he operates. There's a way of operation with God in regards to man. See, remember Elijah, Elijah, bird raven brought him food the raven didn't come to die so that he will fry it and eat the raven brought him prepared food from where i don't know praise god but 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 that story is true now we find esther when she prayed god gave her wisdom knowledge and joy so, you know, that's, that's what, we, when we pray concerning our society, that's what we should expect. Don't be praying and expect that one day, you know, sometimes people are praying and they expect someday somebody will come and lead us in a revolution. That's, you see, that's not what you should even be expecting. Why do you need a revolution? Oh, we're tired of all these people. You think you need a revolution to clear them out? Or you think you need a revelation for them to have a change of heart? It is God that does all things. So when you bring yourself under the power and authority of the Lord and do what is right, thank you, Holy Spirit, then the Lord will take charge. And then how does he take charge? He will supply wisdom. He will supply knowledge like he did to Esther. Suddenly Esther knew what to do. Suddenly she's standing before the king and she knew that this is just it seems to just be one last chance. You know what I mean by that? Because she had already determined in herself that I'm going to stand there. And then if I perish, I perish. And then suddenly the king said, ask me anything that you want. Why didn't she just go straight and said, king, look who, him I want to kill us. Please save our lives. That's what I want to ask. No, no, no. She submitting her mind to the wisdom of God. I'm sure that was what the Lord gave to her when she was fasting and praying. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, uh, when, when we read stories like this, you don't understand the, the background. For example, you think Esther just finished praying. Oh, labu kasha kala ba ba ba. Of course, uh, she wasn't praying in tongues then. But you know, however she was praying then. And then she, she finished praying and said, oh, today's the third day. All right, we'll finish fasting and pray. Now I'm going to appear before the king. Before she stood before the king, even though she had said, if I perish, I perish. I want to tell you this for free. Before she stood before the king, she had received assurance from the Lord that she's doing the right thing. She had received assurance from the Lord that he, how do you know that? That's what happens when we pray. And how do I know that's what really happened with Esther? Look at her action afterwards. Her action they didn't look like someone who was like, if I perish, I perish. Her action looked like someone who had looked at the host and realized that she was in charge. So when the king says, look, ask me anything you want, she wasn't in a hurry to ask anything. She just said, king, I'm going to make a banquet this evening. And I want you and Haman to come for the banquet. <laughs> and the king said, is that why? You are looking so beautiful like this. Come on now. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 5. Then the king said, bring him on quickly that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. At the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted you. What is your request? Up to half of the kingdom, it shall be done. The same thing, the king said, look, man, Esther, I know there's something in your heart. Go ahead and ask it. Just tell me what it is. <laughs> Praise God. Then Esther answered and said, my petition and request is this. And I can say, yes, 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 yes. Praise God. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if 
it pleases the king to grant my petition, petition and fulfill my request. Then let the king and Amen come to the banquet which I will prepare for them. And tomorrow I will do as the king has said. Okay. Hey. Esther, you mean this banquet of wine is not enough? You want us to come for another one and another one? He said, yes, sir. This, this must really be great. I mean, what's in your heart must be heavy. You see, now then. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So Haman went out that day. This, this story is exciting. You know, whenever I read this story, you see, that, and that's what the scriptures does to us. It gives us comfort. Like the Bible says, these things were written for our learning so that we through faith and comfort of the scriptures you have people plotting against you this is the story you should read and be comforted in your heart praise god so haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart but when haman saw mordecai at the king's gate and that he did not stand or tremble before him he was filled with indignation against mordecai nevertheless haman restrained himself and went home and he sent and called for his friends and his wife zeresh then he told them of his great riches haman now talking the multitude of his children everything in which the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the officials and the servants of the king <laughs> Praise God. Now, he was boasting, saying, man, things are looking good for me. The numbers are good. Praise God. Everything is just working in my favor. Man, you remember the king just promoted me. Man, now, even now, watch, watch. Verse 12. Let me run, run ahead. Moreover, Haman said, besides, man, everything is just working well. And apart from that, besides, Queen Esther invited no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she has prepared. And tomorrow, I am invited, I'm again invited by her along with the king. Yet, all these avail me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Did you see this man? Everything seemed to be working out for his favor. Everything seemed to be go going so great for him. But he said, what? Man... Yeah, everything is working, but man, there's one thing that is vexing me every time. I say, so what's it? Mordecai, that man, I must get him out of that gate. I must get him out of that place. Now I want you to follow this now. Then his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, this was their counsel, let a gallow be made 50 cubits high, and in the morning suggest to the king that Mordecai be hanged on it. Then go merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman so that he had the gallow made. Now you see how counsel, you see how advice, you see how counselors play a role in people's life to their good and also to their destruction. You see how Ahitophel, we read that last week. See how Ahitophel cancelled Absalom. And it looked good in his sight. He carried it out. Now, now you find here also, Haman had a problem. Haman had an issue with Mordecai. He didn't cook this idea up. You know what? That's why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it says, take the wicked away from the king. His throne will be established in righteousness. Most times, it is not the king that is the problem. It is the people that are around the king that is the problem. Hear me, hear me, hear me. If a king is failing, don't blame him. Look at the people around him. They are not telling him the truth. If, if, if the president of our nation is not doing well, hey, it's not him. It is the people around him, the people closest to him, the people that tell him what is happening in the, in, the, in the state affairs, they are the ones to be held accountable. Now, when they are selfish, looking for their own personal gain, the trouble of the nation will be great. You know why? They are not going to be looking at the whole issue holistically. They are going to be looking at how to advance their own personal or selfish aim. And that is always myopic. And that's why the Lord is saying we should pray this prayer we are praying every night. And, and believe me, some of them are finding their way out already. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
his city council, Haman's friends and wife gave to him. This is what causes the downfall of a king or a leader or a nation. We will continue from here tomorrow. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even right now we ask that the wicked, the selfish, are taken away from around our president and, and the leaders of our nation. We surround them with righteous men. In Jesus' name. And we see the effect of this right now. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.